Welcome back everyone. Today we'll be starting a two-part series dealing with costume or cosplay photography. I'm going to apologize ahead of time, they're re-roofing the building next to ours, so if you hear any banging going on, that's what's going on. In this video I'll be discussing equipment for photo shoots and location scouting. In the next one you'll actually come with Berg and I to our Legolas Centurial photo shoot as we show you how we pose, how I set up for poses, how I set other people up for poses, how I figure out lighting techniques, stuff like that, and then I'll come back home for the editing process, show you what I use to edit, how I edit, etc. The camera that I'm currently using is a Canon Rebel T3, which I can't exactly show you, but I'll put a picture up right now. I use the lens that it actually came with in the kit, which is an 18 by 55 millimeter lens, which is your standard lens for a DSLR. You can obviously get all sorts of other types of focal lengths of lenses. They're adaptable. Most of the Canon lenses coincide with other lenses and will work. I'll post a link in the description bar below where I got this camera. I personally love it. I've had no problems with it. It does HD video, obviously, as I'm recording right now. We got the camera for our New Zealand trip three years ago because we really needed uh, something that was going to capture the stunningness of the landscape, especially since we were bringing costumes down there and all we had was something along the lines of a Nikon cool pics which are good for your everyday photography but for what we were trying to uh, capture wasn't necessarily the best and when you're getting into photography you're gonna want to look and invest into a pretty decent DSLR and Canon and Nikon are the two top DSLR brands um, I had no problem with Canon um, I love this camera thoroughly. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to keep around for a while until I'm able to upgrade. Nikons are awesome. Also, um, Berg's brother, who used to uh, do photo shoots for us, has a Nikon. It's an excellent camera. These things are beasts. They'll work for you. Um, as long as you take good care of them, clean them, keep the upkeep up on them, they are excellent. Um, and this is definitely, like I said, something that you're going to need to put a little effort into and save up for for photography if you're getting into photography for yourself especially for costume photography if you can't always get a hold of a photographer this is the best thing for you and I know that it's constantly a pain to get in in touch with other people to do photographs for you and personally for me <laughs> it has been a lifesaver to have my own camera with a timer on it stuff that I can possibly do for myself and friends and it especially helped because I took photography in college but you don't need that. There's tons of tutorials online I'm going to help you in the next tutorial on how to set up a shot, stuff like that. For DSLRs you're going to need a pretty good SD card, pretty beefy enough gigabytes or terabytes on that SD card to be able to hold as many photos as you possibly can and as I'll discuss in the second video you're going to want to take multiple shots you don't know, it, that's kind of what photographers usually do, especially on studio shots, they take a huge range of shots because one shot might be blurry, you might have a hundred shots and out of those hundred, five of them are good. And I'm talking about the way that you pose, etc. Um, if the camera accidentally shook, then you're going to get blurriness in a shot, which has happened multiple times, uh, you definitely need to check your photos and just take multiple shots. More is always better in this case. Regardless if you're shooting alone, um, you're gonna want a tripod. I personally have a Velbon tripod. I think it's, <laughs> I don't want to say it's an antique, but I don't think you can get it anymore, but I'll post a link down below where you can get an updated version. Mine's metal and pretty grounded. It's, it's awesome but Velbon is a really good tripod. Um, you're going to spend a little bit, but again, like with the camera, you're going to want to spend a little bit more to be able to get your money's worth and get a really good telescoping uh, 360 tripod. Another thing to think about that most people don't think about is have a backup battery, just in case, because these batteries on these DSLRs do run down relatively quick, and you don't want to be stuck out somewhere with a dead battery. For indoor lighting, I, I personally have a ring light, which I actually bought for just YouTube purposes, but I've gotten a ton of use out of it from a photography standpoint because it's just clean, even lighting. It's excellent. 
can't express enough how awesome it can make a shot look for an up-close, detailed shot of someone's face or of a costume, whatever you need. It is an excellent source of lighting. You can also use other types of lighting. Um, I've rigged up lights before, but this is a pretty much a pretty good go-to for lighting. Um, again, Berg's brother has a, a lighting photography kit that comes with three lights with uh, silver umbrellas to reflect the light and bounce it back. And those are really good too for different kinds of shots. Um, we used it to light up our Once Upon a Time shot out in the backyard of uh, Berg's parents' house. There's all sorts of different types of lighting. You can get lighting kits on eBay. Again, I'll find another one that uh, Berg's Brothers personally has, which we've borrowed before for different kinds of lighting techniques. Um, I'll post it down below. It's relatively inexpensive, uh, especially for lighting. So keep that in mind. For outdoor lighting, you're obviously going to rely on the sun, but there's different kinds of ways that you can manipulate the sun's light. And the main thing is with a reflector and a diffuser diffuser reflector. Um, this one is also from eBay, relatively inexpensive. This one I think was like $8. It came with a case which we accidentally lost on a photo shoot, or Gimli Lowell's photo shoot to be exact. Um, but uh, they do fold up like that and pop back out for easy storage. Uh, it has a little uh, loop on the end which you can hanging from things to be able to manipulate the light. It opens up for a reflector and a diffuser and the warm light from the gold uh, reflector on that side and obviously the silver is kind of the cool light. I take this out almost every single photo shoot I have because you never know when there's too much harsh light on someone's face and you have to deflect wherever the light is coming from or there's not enough light on particularly cloudy days and you have to manipulate the light onto your subject's face, and I'll demonstrate that in the next video when we actually go out on a photo shoot. Now before we talk about location shooting, I'll talk about uh, shooting at home. Um, I usually use a black backdrop for plain shots. Um, this is for you know detailing shots to see how the costume looks on you, or uh, up close detail shots of another costume on another person if you want to, but um, I typically use this on some of my videos, you've probably seen, it's just a plain cotton black backdrop. Um, it's fairly wide. I don't know the exact dimensions, but again, as with the rest of the stuff, I'll put a link down below where you can purchase this off of eBay. Um, these usually come with uh, PVC poles that you can hang up. I typically just uh, pin it up or tape it up to the wall. Very haphazard, but it works in a pinch. Now moving on to location scouting. Uh, this is a big one, especially if you're trying to fully showcase and immerse yourself into the costume and the character that you've portrayed. Um, it depends really on what you're looking for. Always think about the character, where they're from. You know, you don't want to take uh, an elf from Middle Earth and go into a downtown metropolis. It's gonna look a little weird. I mean, unless you're into that and you've read a fan fiction. I don't know. But we always plan ahead of time. We always go out and uh, scout locations. Uh, there's plenty of nature trails and all sorts of amazing, beautiful locations all over the planet, let's be honest. Um, and you never know until you go out and look. Always search online, Google it. Obviously, Google is your friend. Remember that you can always Google locations to see if there's anything in your neighborhood that could be of any use to you. Never rule anything out. Go there in normal clothes, well in advance, and take a look at the place. Do some test shots, take some video, um, see how the place feels for you, but know your means. If you can't hike, uh, you know, several miles to a location, don't do it. If you think that you can, bring some water and something to eat. <laughs> don't go to a location in full get up, without any water, <laughs> without any kind of backup, make sure you have somebody with you on these certain kinds of locations. When we went down to New Zealand, the uh, Pinnacles, which were the location from Paths of the Dead, that was a three and a half hour hike up to the top, or at least in certain kinds of locations. I mean, we had to hike over a riverbed that was swollen at that point in time. We completely ruined our shoes. No regrets. 
<laughs> we didn't pack enough water and even though we consider ourselves uh, experienced walkers, we walk, you know, somewhere up to upwards of 12 miles on the weekend and, you know, between three and five miles every day. But this was a doozy and this was pretty not expected for, for our means and we, like I said, we didn't pack enough water and that was a, a learning experience. But we got some amazing shots, so I guess that's good, but don't don't be like us. Uh, like I said, know your means, bring water with you, bring a friend, don't go over what you can't possibly do. If you can't hike three miles on a trail to a wonderful location, have a backup. And I'll talk more about backups in a second. Another thing is if you found a place online that looks like a venue, could be a private venue, you don't know if they're going to be really apt to want to cater to your needs, your photography needs, and whatnot, and they might look at you weird for coming in full costume, you can always email the place, and we have done this on multiple occasions. We've done this for our Beauty and the Beast photo shoot. Um, this was an ex-cathedral that was turned into an event venue, and um, we made sure that there was a day there were, there were no events. We made sure to contact the PR person to see if it would be okay if we came in there during the day where there was no events. Just Berg and I and his brother who was shooting for us. Um, and so we emailed the PR person and we told them exactly what we were doing, that we weren't going to be there very long, um, if it would be okay if we came in and used their establishment for our backdrop. And pretty much everyone you contact probably we won't say no. Now of course have a backup, like I said before, if they do happen to say no. But most of the people that we've contacted have been more than willing to be accommodating for our photos. Another instance of a place we contacted was for our Dorothy and Scarecrow photo shoot. I had a specific thing in my mind. I wanted a corn maze, and it was around October, and there was a corn maze not too far away from us. So we sent an email, we found the email on their website. We sent them an email, we said what we wanted to do. We explained the fact that um, Berg as the scarecrow needed to be able to get into the corn. We were gonna bring our own step stools and everything to be able to uplift him and get him above the corn. To to act like he was, you know, on a stake above the corn, you know, an, an actual scarecrow, like he appears in Wizard of Oz. And we described everything that we needed to have access to or be able to do and flushed it all out prior to going. And they emailed us back and said, oh my god, yes, and can we bring our own personal photographer and have her take photos so we can display the photos on our website and possibly put you on a pamphlet for uh, advertisements for our corn maze and our dairy farm that's attached. And of course we were more than happy to comply with that and we ended up on corn maze uh, flyers as Dorothy and Scarecrow, which was kind of cute. You can't find an email for a certain kind of place. For example, we wanted an uh, industrial kind of parking garage or underground highway looking, which we don't have anything around here like that. Uh, so that's why I opted for a parking garage for um, Bucky from Civil War, we had already sourced a motorcycle from a friend, which again, ask around for props or scenery or something that matches your character. If you know a friend or a friend of a friend uh, that has something for a photo shoot, um, ask. And if they say no, no harm, no foul, no loss. So we went to a parking garage downtown with a motorcycle with our friend and um, we were all ready to go. We were looking around downtown and we thought we would more than likely be able to get into uh, a parking garage. We weren't expecting there to be an attendant um, because there was a huge event going on. So we went and asked the attendant if we could uh, go up into the parking garage for a very minimal amount of time. We were going to be up there for an hour or more, anything like that. Uh, we explained what we were doing. Um, so we didn't have to pay, I think, $15 to park our friend's motorcycle and for us to walk up to the second level where no cars were to get the shots that we wanted. And the guy was completely compliant with it. He was cool. He was like, oh yeah, not a big deal. Go on up there. You're not gonna have, you're not gonna get a problem or anything like that. So we were able to get those shots and it took all of maybe 30 minutes and we were done. The moral of the story is just to ask. 
If they say no, always have a backup location, but most people are pretty accommodating and will say yes as long as you describe what you're doing, let them know and feel safe in the fact that you're not going to harm property or trespass where you're not supposed to. Make sure you have all the lines laid out from this person to where you can go and where you can't go. Um, don't disobey that. You don't want to get kicked out and completely ruin your day, completely ruin your photo shoot. Nobody wants that. So uh, always have a backup location just in case that person does say no. Make sure you plan out you know, your photo shoots well in advance um, because it might not happen on the day that you want. Always have a backup date too. But that's pretty much it for location scouting. Just ask around, check around, get out of your comfort zone, hike, look around, see what you can find. And you never know what you can find. Uh, it's going to be an interesting adventure sometimes, but um, that tends to be the most fun part for me of a photo shoot, is to go out and find a location and uh, scout it and, and basically go out and explore. So that pretty much concludes this video. The next video, like I said before, will be the actual photo shoot editing process. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them down below. Remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe for more.